Welcome to a skewed chimp. Hello. I wanted to show you guys the tools I'll be working with. I suppose I should start with my lathe since that's my primary tool. This is my lathe. It's a Nova 162444 lathe. I've been told by several other wood turners that this is a very good lathe and one that's considered a workhorse and that it's sturdy and reliable. That's one of the reasons I was looking for this type of lathe in the first place. By loosening the headstock lock pin, one can relieve tension from the headstock release handle. When this handle is released, it allows one to rotate the swivel head. The swivel head can be locked in place at several different increments of degrees. The swivel head can be left in loose position and tightened into place by the headstock lock pin. But I wouldn't recommend it. There are plenty of settings that should work for you and your turning needs. Personally, I would recommend turning the swivel head out in increments that can be locked in place with the headstock release handle. What this will allow someone to do is to turn very large pieces of wood, changing the maximum radius of the spindle from 8 inches to whatever the distance is from the center on the lathe to the floor. This is really helpful for turning large items, some of which I'll be doing in the future. The lathe also has a spot in the feet for being bolted to the floor in case you need to secure the lathe a bit more, either to process large unbalanced pieces, or if you plan to do some large work on an outboard spindle. The feet of the lathe are also quite strong and well made, and they're pretty easy to individually adjust so that it's relatively easy to level out the lathe, even if it does take some patience, just by the nature of trying to level out something that has four axes. Now let's talk about dollars. My lathe has some miles on it, and I'm not exactly certain how many. The previous owner told me he only had it about nine months. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do believe it didn't get much use. I think you can only get this model used now, and they usually run from about $1,000 to around $1,500. The cheapest one I could find online at the posting of this video was $1,100 or so. Full disclosure, I got mine for $900, and it was complete aside from the operating rod for the swivel head that's missing. But that's easy enough to just use a screwdriver for. Now let's talk about instructions. When I got this lathe, I read the instructions cover to cover because I wanted to make sure I knew how to use it, at least as far as the instructions could help me with that. In so doing, I learned a lot, including things I wouldn't have discovered otherwise. As wood turners, we're spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars on our lathes, and a lot of them have powerful motors and we put insanely sharp metal spikes on them as they spin very quickly. As a matter of safety as well as love of our work, to me it seems like we owe it to ourselves to actually read the instructions. In this case, they were very poorly written. Nova makes excellent lathes, there's no question about that. But they need a better translator to English. Other than that, I got a very robust instruction manual off the net from Nova's site, and I'll try to link to it in the description of this video. The name of the lathe is a Nova 162444. The 16 in the name is indicative of the diameter of the spindle. The center of the headstock and tailstock are 8 inches from the bed of the lathe, so the maximum diameter of a piece on the lathe that goes over the bed is 16 inches. The 24 represents the 24 inches of spindle length that can be achieved between the headstock and the tailstock. The 44 after the hyphen refers to 44 inches, which is the maximum length of the bed if an extension, sold separately, is put in place using these slots at the rear of the lathe. For the motor, it's a 1.5 horsepower motor and it can run in forward or reverse. The combined weight of this lathe is 371 pounds. About 50 pounds of this weight is the legs. Another 20 pounds is the tailstock, an additional 20 is the tool rest. A good 30 is the motor, and the swivel head is probably another 10 or 15 pounds. But when I got it, I didn't know that all these came off, or even where it was obvious, I either lacked the tools or the confidence to feel I could put it back together correctly. Besides, since I wasn't familiar with the lathe yet, it wouldn't have mattered because I wouldn't have known which tools to use or how to go about it. Remember, 7th grade woodshop is the most exposure I've had to tools. Anyway, I had to move it as one giant piece, aside from the legs which I did manage to take off. This posed a problem putting it back together though, because the design of the lathe requires that the swivel head be mounted before the legs could be put on, because of the headstock release handle placed in this pocket underneath the swivel head. That's a lot of weight that has to be levitated. 
A motor lift would have helped too, but I don't have one of those. I was 140 pounds at the time. This thing outweighed me more than 3 to 1, and I'm kind of proud that I was able to get it back together on my own. It really does have to all be lifted at once to get the legs on, and I had to use a system of ropes and pulleys in order to make this happen. On that note, I recommend that after reading the instructions, the next thing a person should do is completely take apart and put back together their lathe. It builds confidence and understanding of the machine, and it can reveal things about the lathe that the owner didn't realize it could do. It's also a great chance to check for rust, loose parts, and to grease it all up and give it a solid coat of paste wax to get started right. Once I had done this, I could break the lathe down so that its heaviest part is around 30 pounds. I'm also confident I could put it back together correctly with just a few simple tools. Why I took it apart is because I kept hearing a clicking noise from the pulleys along with a loud squeaking sound. What had happened is that the previous owner must have had the pulley cover open and had the motor running, which is never a good idea. Something must have then fallen into it and gotten caught, causing some pretty large chunks to be bitten out of the pulleys, and it left sharp edges that would eat into the belt. After using a dremel to cut down the sharp edges, the squeak went away, but the clicking remained. I couldn't figure out what was causing it, but I did get it isolated to the top pulley. That's when I decided I needed to take it all apart and get inside, so that I could see what was causing the issue. I checked the bearings and the belts and the bars and everything else I could think of. When I got truly stumped is when I actually read all of the directions, where in fine print at the very end it says, If your device is clicking, check the grub screws on the pulleys to make sure they're tight. I tightened them, and the clicking went away. So, by reading the instructions first, I could have saved myself a lot of work. Still, I'm glad I did take it all apart, and that's how I'll do it with my next lathe, too, because I definitely understand this machine much better after having done so. This is a manual pulley system, but it's not hard. In order to adjust the speed, it's a simple process. Open the swivel head cover, loosen the T-bar, agglomerate the pulleys, move the belt, Relax the pulleys back into their original positions, depress the belt about a quarter of an inch, and tighten the T-bar. Close the swivel head back up, and you're set. Not fancy, but simple, and it works well. When it's all assembled and properly greased with a coat of paste wax on it, everything slides very smoothly and easily. This is especially true considering how heavy all the parts on this machine are, but they just glide right along on the bed of the lathe. Everything's solidly made so it holds its positions, and it's designed well so it gets things to line up, like the headstock and the tailstock, which can be easily adjusted if they ever do fall out of alignment. The lathe came with a spur center, and it also came with a 3-inch faceplate both of which appeared to be barely used and possibly brand new. It's funny, because by taking the machine apart and by reading the instructions, this is the only way I ever realized this small hole near the center of the lathe. I would have never known what was inside of it if I hadn't done one or both of those things. Now the interesting question is, what's it for? There are 24 notches in here that can be seen if I flash a light inside. Each notch has a number on it. Since it goes in a circle, each position it has a setting for is 15 degrees from the previous or next position. When I turn the center, it turns a dial inside as well. Thus, a person could manually turn the center to lock something in place in increments of 15 degrees. It's called a spindle index. That's what it is, and that's what it's called. What I don't understand is why. I have no idea what this would be used for, except perhaps to do detailed graphic work on a project by drawing straight lines along the spindle or something. It's a little louder than I'd like it to be, but it's also a used lathe that runs really well, and it has a 1.5 horsepower motor that works amazingly in forward or reverse. This thing's a workhorse, and especially given that I believe they no longer even make this model, it's pretty quiet for the technology that existed at the time. It's certainly quiet enough for me, and I think most of us could learn to live with it. It runs pretty smoothly, and I'm really happy with it so far. Well, that's it for my newbie review of the Nova 162444. If I've missed anything, please let me know. I also have a question for all of you. What lathe do you have? Or if you don't have one, what lathe do you think you'd like? 
I'm genuinely curious as to what the consensus is on these types of things, so please do let me know. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope to have something new for you soon. Sincerely, a skewed chimp.